What is good everybody and welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today I will be doing my projected WrestleMania 34 match card. As you know, WrestleMania is approaching very, very fast. We are, I think, under a month away or just about a month away from the biggest event of the year for WWE. Very exciting time. This is probably around the best time of wrestling leading into the summer. So this is a very, very important time. I'm going to let you know now, uh, this is a spoiler alert. Some of these matches are confirmed already and some of them are not. I'm just going to give my projected opinion and these are just based on rumors and my own, you know, predictions and stuff like that. So Heads up already, do not uh, comment down below, thanks for spoiling it, yada yada yada, you've been warned now, so do not uh, get upset if uh, you find out something that you didn't know previously. So with that being said guys, let's get into the card. The first match we have guys is the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, and this match may not even be on the card, you know, it's rumored that it may be dropped, it could be replaced with a women's battle royal, yada yada yada. If that does happen, then I guess you can ignore this segment, but I'm predicting if Braun Strowman is not thrown into the Intercontinental Championship picture, which would be absolutely terrible, that should not happen, or he's thrown into the Universal Championship picture, then he will be placed in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, if it even takes place. So I'm guessing like if he's not thrown in one of those title pictures, then they would have to have this match because then there'll be no place on the card for him. They'll have to throw him in here, have him win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, and then uh, eliminate like 20 guys. I put it in my predictions last year that he should have been in this thing and eliminated 20 guys. They didn't go with that. They had him eliminated in 90 seconds. Another dumb decision. But yes, I predict that Braun Strowman would win that. The next match we have up, guys, is the Women's Memorial Battle Royal. The first time ever. You know how WWE loves their first time ever. They love their, you know, uh, women equal opportunities. So I think they're going to be doing this this year. I could see them doing both Battle Royals on the pre-show and then having every title on the main show. That would be fine with me, you know. Uh, I just don't see them giving a place to this on the main card. I think that if you put both Battle Royals on the pre-show that way, everything's equal, yada, yada, yada. But yes, leave all your main titles on the main card. That's where they deserve to be. You really downplay your championships when they're not on the pre-show. So I think that they will definitely be having a women's battle royal to go along with their men's battle royal. They love to stick every single superstar into their WrestleMania card. And you'll see what I mean um, later on in this video. But yes, I do predict that both male and females will have a battle royal to start the show. The first match we have on the main card, guys, is Bayley taking on Sasha Banks. You know, we've seen this play out. This would have been much better if it was for the Women's Championship, but no, WWE wants to make it Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax for some awful reason. I guarantee this match will be 10 times better than that match will be. However, Bayley and Sasha Banks have been trading back and forth. As you know, Elimination Chamber, they've been building this thing forever, it seems like, and one of them should have turned heel on the other. Maybe this will happen before WrestleMania takes place, but it would have been a ton, thousand times better had this been for the Raw Women's Championship. The next matchup we have is a mixed tag team match and the debut of Ronda Rousey. She will be teaming up with Kurt Angle to take on Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. We have already seen this take place. You know, at her contract signing at Elimination Chamber, we saw the feud start there. She slammed Triple H through the table. We've had tension building on Raw, and I'm sure over the next few weeks leading up to WrestleMania, this will be a confirmed matchup. You know, they've already said that she will wrestle at WrestleMania, so it's obvious that this is the way they are going. I think it should be all right. You know, she uh, she shouldn't have a singles match for her debut. They wanted to be pretty solid, and they can protect her in this mixed tag team match. She won't have to carry it the whole way and be on her own. So I think this is a good way to start off Ronda Rousey in the WWE. Next up, we have a tag team match between Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens taking on Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan. As you know, Daniel Bryan has been cleared by every single doctor except by the WWE, and his contract is supposed to expire in September. But I think that um, they want to get this man back in the ring, but in the safest way possible. And a great way to do that would be to throw him in a tag team match with Shane McMahon and these two guys. Have him not take so many, uh, you know, vicious bumps like in a singles competition. He can, you know, balance it out with Shane. And we have had this feud building forever, it seems like, on SmackDown Live every single week. These two going head to head. I think they will finally come together and realize that Sami and KO are evil. They'll tag, to, you know, team up and take them on at WrestleMania. Give the fans a feel-good moment with Daniel Bryan returning and have him in a solid matchup here 
a great way to protect him and I think that if this feud doesn't lead to this match taking place at WrestleMania or Daniel Bryan getting back in the ring at all, then this is a huge waste of time and opportunity on SmackDown Live. Next up, we have the finals of the Cruiserweight Tournament between Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali. That's just who I would project to be the final two competitors. Obviously, um, those are the two most talented cruiserweights, in my opinion. I guess you could put Roderick Strong over Cedric Alexander. Cedric Alexander is my favorite cruiserweight, so I wouldn't like that. I would like to see Cedric finally get his time, win the championship. You know, he was feuding with Enzo before Enzo's release or whatever. So I think that this will be the right move. I love Mustafa Ali. I think they could tear the absolute house down, and this should not be on the pre-show at all. They should give these guys at least... 10 to 15 minutes to tear the house down at WrestleMania. Next, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match between The Bar, The Club, and The Revival. If it were up to me, I would just have The Revival taking on The Bar in a 2 out of 3 falls match or something like that. Really allow them guys to have a lot of time. I think they could do great, great work. Um, I, I know for a fact that WWE is not going to leave The Club and probably Titus Catering as well off of the Degum thing. I know that they love, they absolutely love to cram as many superstars as possible onto the card just because they got to have everybody on there. They got to have every single superstar a chance at WrestleMania. So I would predict that it's either going to be like a triangle type deal with these three, or they may even throw Titus Catering in there because that's the only four teams on the Degum brand. So that is my projection there. Again, I would love to just see the Revival versus the Bar, which could actually happen, but I know for a fact WWE is going to throw more teams into the freaking rink. Next up, we have an Intercontinental Championship triple threat match between The Miz, Seth Rollins, and Finn Balor. As you know, last week on Monday Night Raw, Miz lost to Seth Rollins and Finn Balor on the same night. And as of last night on Monday Night Raw, I'm sure that something else built between this. I am recording this before Monday Night Raw, so I do not know what took place, but I'm sure it was something else building to this match happening at WrestleMania. They may even have announced this match at WrestleMania. However, I think this will be a great match. I think that Finn Balor will bring out the Demon at WrestleMania. You know, they haven't brought him out in a while, and it is Finn Balor's first WrestleMania, so what a way to debut the, de the Demon at WrestleMania in this match, win the Intercontinental Championship. Next up, we have a multi-man ladder match for the United States Championship between Dolph Ziggler, Rusev, Bobby Roode, Randy Orton, Jinder Mahal, and Baron Corbin. Again, they love to push all of their talent onto the card, and they always have a big-time ladder match, usually with a lot of superstars or teams at WrestleMania, so I think they'll use the United States Championship since they have a lot of talent they can use here. Um, at Fastlane, I don't know if it will be Bobby Roode or Randy Orton walking out as champion, uh, so you could put the title on either guy right here. I'm sure tonight on SmackDown Live they will end up adding Jinder Mahal to the card um, at Fastlane to make it a triple threat. So regardless of what man walks out of uh, Fastlane with the United States Championship, they will defend it here in a multi-man match at WrestleMania. Dolph Ziggler, if he were to win, or him or Baron Corbin were to win at Fastlane, don't think it's going to happen. As much as I love Dolph Ziggler, um, it would obviously be a triple threat between Nakamura Styles and that person that won the WWE Championship. So I think this is the best way to go for the U.S. title. Next up, we have the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between the Usos, New Day, and Bludgeon Brothers. However, you never know who's going to be the champion walking into WrestleMania. I still know they're going to do a multi-man SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're not going to leave the New Day off. They're not going to leave the Usos off. They're not going to leave, you know, the Bludgeon Brothers. They're building them up nicely. We don't know exactly what will take place at Fastlane just yet, but I'm pretty sure the Bludgeon Brothers are definitely going to get their opportunity at WrestleMania. And I could definitely see them throwing Gable and Benjamin in there as well, just because, you know, they got to get every single pl uh, person onto WrestleMania. So. This is what I'm projecting, a big-time SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match, just like the Raw Tag Team Championships. Uh, I think they'll do the same thing, multiple teams coming in, and only one champion walking out. Up next, we have the Raw Women's Championship match between champion Alexa Bliss taking on Nia Jax. I say this because I think that after Fastlane, Asuka will come out and say she wants to challenge Charlotte instead of Alexa Bliss. That will leave nobody to take on Alexa Bliss. Therefore, they'll have like a number one contendership thing or something like that to declare that Nia Jax will end up winning. And then we will have Alexa Bliss taking on Nia Jax. This will be way better had Bailey or Sasha won the chamber. And then the opposite of that one uh, fight at WrestleMania. Much better match. Way better, you know, for WrestleMania and everything. This match is, I just don't see how this one can go. I know it's supposed to be best friends or whatever going head-to-head -head or whatever that is. 
um, that we have seen over this past year. However, I think this match is going to be blah, and I, uh, I don't think I care for it. Next is the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match between Champion Charlotte taking on Asuka. Again, like I said in the last clip, Asuka will challenge Charlotte after Fastlane. You know, they're not revealing it before Fastlane because we got to see, you know, Ruby Wright and Charlotte. We got to, you know, they got to make it uh, less predictable. So what we have to do is um, after Fastlane, Asuka will come out, say, I don't want Alexa Bliss, I want Charlotte. And we will have an epic matchup between uh, Asuka and Charlotte at WrestleMania 34 for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. Much better match than Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. And this is an actual WrestleMania-worthy match. Next up, we have The Undertaker taking on John Cena, and I know that this match has been downplayed. John Cena even came out himself and said this match wasn't going to happen. Uh, Undertaker's been downplaying it, and the rumor was supposed to be Rey Mysterio versus John Cena, but now that we know that Rey Mysterio's bicep is torn or whatever that happened to him, it is pretty much uh, guaranteed that we will see Undertaker taking on John Cena. And that's pretty much what I'm going to say. Either we see Undertaker interfere at Fastlane in the six-pack challenge, or after that, or before, which I don't think that would happen before because that wouldn't make any sense. So I'm predicting after Fastlane, Undertaker interrupts John Cena somewhere along the line, accepts his challenge, and this will take place at Mania 34. Next up, we have the WWE Championship match between the champion AJ Styles taking on Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke won the 2018 Royal Rumble to earn this opportunity. As you know, AJ Styles is defending his WWE Championship at Fastlane in the six-pack challenge against uh, all those men, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, John Cena, Baron Corbin, Dolph Ziggler, and I think that he will retain in that matchup, and we will see this match take place. I would love for this to main event, but you know it is not. Uh, I just don't see it happening. Even though the Royal Rumble winner is supposed to main event WrestleMania, they're going to downplay it so they can give it to the big dog, but everybody wants to see this matchup, and I can't wait to see this culminate at WrestleMania 34. But um, yes, definitely going to be match of the night at Mania. And for the main event, all of you guys already know the Universal Championship match between Brock Lesnar and the big dog Roman Reigns. We've all known for a year now that Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar would go head-to-head -to, -head to main event WrestleMania 34 for the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns won the Elimination Chamber. Very, very predictable outcome. Seven-man Elimination Chamber. Roman Reigns' only man eliminates Braun Strowman after Braun Strowman eliminates every single member. And uh, Roman Reigns will be defeating Brock Lesnar at the main event of uh, WrestleMania 34. Even though this match seems so controversial between Johnny Bravo's, you know, accusations against Reigns and the steroid stuff and then Brock Lesnar's contract and not wanting to work very hard because he's going to UFC and just everything. And I feel like this match is going to get so much hate at the event. Like, they're going to boo this match out of the building. They may ruin it like Goldberg and Lesnar. I could definitely see that. And this match is just whatever. Um, Brock not wanting to go very long. And then Roman Reigns and his stuff. He could be pulled from this. We don't know just yet. But this is what I'm going with for now. We haven't heard anything just yet. So this is the projected match card for now. But that is going to do it for the entire WrestleMania match card, guys. I'm sure it'll be a seven-hour show just like it was last time. Just, just excruciatingly too long. Just so freaking much wrestling for one sitting. But that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like down below. Comment down below your projected matches that you would like to see take place at WrestleMania 34. Subscribe for more epic WWE and WWE figure-related videos, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.